Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 10. I am Keith. I'm here with my good friend, Doug. Doug, I got the episode number right. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't last time. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And then I misspelled episode as, you know, one of our uh, most uh, faithful fans pointed out to us. <laughs> it yeah. was a long weekend last weekend going to the arcade. <laughs> Absolutely. How's this week treating you, man? It's been so busy. I know we're we're late recording. Because we both had crazy busy weekends, and then mm-hmm. we got a holiday coming up. So this episode is going to actually serve for covering this past weekend that we missed, and then also the upcoming one. We're going to take a little bit of a breather for one weekend. Or I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, times are flying by, um, as you see in my not so leisurely T-shirt. So you I dressed up. My, uh, you dressed up for I the did. podcast. <laughs> I, I'm dressed up for our Easter episode here. That's what I the say. Easter. But, uh, just for everybody who's on audio, yeah. he is. I don't have uh, a lot of spring colors. But. He's buttoned down. He's wearing a buttoned down blue shirt. Looks like he's ready to go to church. So, oh yeah, the the church of the church of Wired Nerdy. But yeah, we've uh, I think had some really good episodes. For those that don't know, we have uh, YouTube videos out there. Uh, do. You've done a couple game reviews. I've done Fallout One doing really good thank you for, for everybody that's watched it yep. uh lots of likes fallout 2 uh mm-hmm. i think we talked about doing fallout tactics and fallout 3 which i have not played so i'm kind of excited to get about uh, getting into that yeah it's our attempt to do some quick little video game reviews uh of the ones that are personal to us that have impacted yeah. us and we're having it's it's honestly it's it's fun, I like right? It. It's good. Yeah. So it's good. Check out those videos for sure. Uh, Doug's Fallout 1 videos is blowing up. I will say that. It's hilarious. We don't, I, the algorithm must grab I it and run. Think, yeah. He's going viral, man. We're up to like over 200 views. Um, and so, Very and I exciting. know that doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme, but to us, that's, that's awesome. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> so yeah, we're two for two. I did two other obscure games. I did yeah. uh, Zach McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. Yeah, it's very obscure. <laughs> and then I had also done Wing Commander for the Super Nintendo, which, as you know, if you've watched this episode at all, I'm crazy about oh, Wing yeah. Commander. So uh, we did. We've done whole episodes on. It. So they're just things that are passionate to us, and we are trying to find some of the more obscure things. The good news is, is being friends with my 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 brother, who collects every not only physical game there is but all the roms doug and i are like we look in the back catalog of what he's given us alone and we're like oh my god there's so there's so much content we will never run out of content just by doing retro reviews (laughs) so but we're having a good time with this so definitely check them out yes uh so we were busy we did comic con and then we did the arcade tour yeah so we've missed out on the nerd news right so we got we a lot of got, uh, yeah. extra nerd news today. I have saved up a couple weeks worth of nerd news. Oh, yeah. Some of it's a little outdated, but it's still relevant. Uh, it's still relevant. Yeah. So we're going to make up for that lost time for those of you that enjoy the nerd news. So let's queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and get the share going. And I think the first one is going to be that EA one. Uh, yeah. Doug, if you want to set it up while I get the share up. Yeah, so I uh, keep an eye out for all these sales. You know, Epic Games, good old games, Steam, um, Amazon Prime Gaming, all these different outlets, all the different forms have sales, free games, giveaways. So the latest, um, EA added a bunch of classics. Uh, They put them on sale on Steam. Uh, You're talking Command & Conquer Ultimate Collection. I already have it. Amazing. SimCity 3000. I haven't played that in years. Great game. So a little side story. I was in summer school and I actually taught a class on how to play SimCity 3000. How? Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So when oh. SimCity came out, I played it uh, hardcore and then I got to teach a little <laughs> class to huh. a bunch of other kids on how to play SimCity. That would be so. uh, a class I would definitely like to go to. But you're, yeah, you're right. You, you put this out there. Part of me wonders, so Steam just did their spring sale, but then you added this. Do you think this is them trying to dig into the good old games market? Because good old games is a Steam competitor, but they they have modern games, but they're known for old retro games because a lot of their stuff's guaranteed to work because it comes bundled with like DOSBox. Yeah. Um, and this list is awesome. I mean, oh, yeah. Alpha Centauri. Dude, oh, yeah. for our friend Matt, I just got to say this. He loves Civilization. Uh, Alpha Centauri is basically. Oh, he needs to check it out. Oh, yeah. it, it's in yeah. space. It's so so good. And 
Then the last one on the list, if you have not played The Saboteur, I it is not. amazing. It starts yeah. in a black and white format. It's in uh, Nazi Germany. As you unlock different areas, it turns to color. It's amazing. I've never played that. So as you free Paris, as you free France, Mm -hmm. it turns from black and white to color. And I think it's amazing. So I'm getting. I mean, I may be alone in that uh, thought process, but that's okay. That's an amazing concept, though. I'm I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna play it. Actually, I found the trailer that's out there. And you're right. I did see Command, Command and Conquer. Yeah, uh, was out there, but just a mainstream game that uh, was in black and white, not color. It's like, okay, it's, what am I playing there? Yeah, but it slowly gets to color, huh? Yeah. Wow. And then while we're watching Dungeon Keeper right now, I've never played that or Populous. Populous no. is great. I only yeah. played the first one. Um, it's really good. Up oh, SimCity three thousand. Awesome. Great game. I got to play Saboteur. Really, I never played this. Was this on three sixty too? I believe Or is it so. Xbox One, I will, maybe? I don't look that up. Yeah. I played it on 360, I thought. I, I remember seeing the Saboteur box art, but I I never picked that one up for some reason. But I'm definitely going to. I'm going to add it to my back catalog. Yeah, it came out on 360, then it went That's to right. PS3, Windows. Yep. Uh, it was even on uh, iOS and Black. Very, that that's a quick Google search. I'll have. So who knows? We'll have don't to fact confirm check me on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm definitely gonna check it out. So that's that's really cool. I'm glad these are out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna check them out, and they're probably pretty cheap, being older yeah. too. So, all right, that's a good good starter, man. <clears throat> so next yeah. one, if I can get my Mashable up here, is Apple is going to let iPhone users delete Safari and easily transition to Android. A lot of this is Fallout from and not the video game a lot of this is this is in the wake of all the changes <laughs> exactly that the eu is uh making them so you know in the time that we put this in here too apple has been declared by the department of justice as they're going after them kind of like they did with microsoft in the like in, a monopoly in the, yeah, yeah they're saying they're monopolistic the tendencies now apple's come back to that they came out swinging and said look our ways of doing things um It's for security and privacy because we're big on privacy. So having such a closed, walled off environment, which, you know what? I I do think they have a good point about that. But as a uh, non-iPhone user, I have to agree that you can only secure your programs when Mm -hmm. you make them in-house. Yeah, that's true. And control what gets posted as well, like within your app store. Now you know allowing them to you know remove safari is a big deal because a lot of people prefer chrome for example yeah. i even know yeah. people my wife is one she has she loves it she has a, a mac book and she also has ios but she prefers chrome yeah. um so she doesn't use safari she will not do it but well, so this is a big deal yeah uh, kind of along the same lines not to interrupt you there there's been yeah, a ahead. big debate on apple maps versus uh Google Maps, sorry. And then uh, you had Waze, but I think uh, Google took over Waze and it's integrated it into its uh, Google Map program. Mm-hmm. Yep. And by the way, just as a note, the article does point out that this whole thing is specific to EU users, but it stands to reason. If they do it in the EU, they may do it here domestic stateside as well. Yeah. So the more we read about the EU, they are tough on companies. They are. So I work in IT, as you all know, and I work for um, a company that operates globally. And what I can tell you is when we have our software deployed, like we're going to market, we have a completely different go-to-market strategy for the EU, GEO, as we would call it, uh, because they are so strict on data privacy and the rights of the consumer. And it's not wrong. I mean, it's very strict, but uh, it really is. It was like early on, they passed this thing to where you can contact uh, this one centralized repository and say, look, my name is Doug. Uh, I want to know everything that's been captured about me. And you get a report. And it's your legal right. They have to do that. So there's rules like that. So any software company gathering any data has to make it accessible to you. And you have to be able to say no. So yeah, it's uh, it's a different market to play in for sure. And that's why I think Apple is kind of, I don't know. Then getting their comeuppance on some of this stuff. It's going to be tough for them. Between going USB-C, and I don't think all this is bad, I'll be honest with you. I think Apple can still find a way to maintain its sovereignty of being special, but still have universal things like USB-C, having universal, um, the 
text messaging you and I talk about all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That protocol. RCS. Thank you. That's what it is. Yep. It was the RCS. I think they can. Rich communication standard, maybe? Yes, perhaps. It's a Monday, so. It is a Monday. Uh, but so I think they can do all this and, and be okay. Yep. So kind of along the same lines, you talked about getting a report of all the stuff out there for you, right? Yep. Um, not to say anything about me, but I did my full name and my city I'm currently in, 2 million results from Google. Because uh, Google can first, tell you that, right? Yeah. Uh, the first 10 things have my picture where I've worked the last two or three jobs. It's scary. Hold up, though. Just so our people did you go straight to google and do it or is it inside yeah, of, just like... straight in a google search yep oh, there you go yeah and uh it's kind of scary so i tell people go out there put your name put your city in there and see what all the internet has about you yeah it's my thoughts are i'm an open book everything's out there and it's gonna be very hard to get that off the internet yeah privacy is a myth i've said that for a long time so yeah. let's not put the tinfoil hats on all right you know, yeah just so yet. we'll keep going yeah. <laughs> let's just keep rolling <laughs> hey i kind of jumped kinda the gun on the same lines yeah well it is i i forgot that we added this uh apple's antitrust fight begins the verge cast here uh, apple monopoly yeah this is what you just said a moment ago it's monopolistic so the doj is going after them um and see why your apple watch can't hang on to android that was an interesting thing about this article. So you, correct me if I'm wrong, you have an Android watch, right? I do. And you and, want uh, an Apple those watch. those on video, kind of. There it is. Show yeah. there, yeah. I have, a, I have an Apple watch. See this here? Yeah. No, I am you jealous want one, of though. the Apple watch. I've talked about it in the past. The design of the Apple watch seems just so nice. And the watch faces, all that uh, minimalist stuff, nobody really cares about. I care about, so. Well, and... Interesting about this article, one thing that they cite is people who want an Apple Watch, but they're using Android, it doesn't stay connected. And the, it, it, no. it hints at a suggestion that maybe that's baked into it, which would be monopolistic, to be fair. Now, yeah. I, think that, I, I, I think that would be foolish because Apple wants to sell you a watch, even if you're an Android user, right? Uh, mm. Or vice versa, you know? So I don't, I don't know. This this whole thing's going to be very interesting to see how all this stuff plays out. It is. But we go back to, and I have to agree with you, that if you allow other formats, other OSs to come into your stuff, that invites viruses and bugs and all kinds of things, I would think. It does. The early days of Android were scary. I was there, yeah. my friend. <laughs> you had to be careful. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Let's keep on rocking and rolling. I'll let you take this one. Yeah, Android 15 looks promising. You know, every time they announce um, developer images, I believe that's what you say, of these new OSs, they come out with new things. Some get cut, but some stay. This looks like it's going to stay uh, satellite text messaging. So when you don't have signal, you're out on that hike, or you're somewhere where there's not a lot of cell phone towers, you can still get a message out to family and friends. So I think that'd be a good thing. Now, as the resident Apple guy, I have to point out, this was already, Ooh. Uh, I was just going to say, for Team Apple. I was going to say, the last event they had, that was one of their things, and it was a combination of uh, the Apple Watch can do it, as well as your phone, because they did a whole like video announcing it, and if somebody gets lost, and you don't have cell signal, like you said, that was their like main premise of the video, is that security-wise, you can still make a phone call. So Apple did announce that they had this already. Yeah, I'm looking through our list. I know that we covered um, some hiking stuff and yeah. some things that you could send text messages with. We uh, talked about I GPS at one point too, didn't we? Nope. So it is uh, season one, episode 31. Look if at you. you all want to check that out, we talk about GPS trackers for road trips and hikes. I think there was one by Garmin that allowed you to send some satellite uh, text messages. There was. Man, look at you. You're quick on that research button. Jeez. That's this big monitor. I like it. I guess that you're like uh, you're like Jamie on the Joe Rogan show. That's going to be my new thing. I'll be like Joe Rogan. Like, bring, that, bring that up, Doug. Why don't you bring that up, Doug? Actually, I guess I kind of do that already. I'm not as I? good as him, but. Yeah. I kind of already do that, though, don't I? <laughs> why don't you look I, that up, Doug? I got multiple <laughs> windows. If you want me to research something, I think I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get Doug a big monitor so he can do a research faster. Although your monitor is huge now oh so. it is nice compared to like the it. when we started the podcast 
<laughs> well, it's not good. I have to side note. It's not good for first person shooters because I actually have to look to the left and to the right. You would hate my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Because what what size is your monitor? First of all, I don't want to get it's on a tangent. It's a here, forty inch widescreen flat, though. Yeah, so mine's a forty nine inch flex. Mm. Nice. And so it, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's big. This is where we take our pocket protectors and throw them up in the air, like woo. Exactly. I know. Okay. I'm not. No, I'm not flexing. I'm just saying. I. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. Well, I was flexing a little bit, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, my and it's funny. Ironically, I use the word flex, but mine is the one that it's bendable. So. Actually flexes. Yeah, yeah, I can actually curb it. But I keep wow. it flat most of the time, which is ironic. I could have just gotten a TV. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll get back on track. Ah, That's sorry, my sorry. fault. So. It's, yeah, you uh, see what we had all this time. Activity we had all this time uh, away great. from each other. So, yeah. We did. Satellite connectivity in your cell phone. Come, in, come into your Android near you, mm-hmm. even though Apple already had it. <laughs> so I shared this uh, next article. Um, keep us great. going here. Xbox Design Lab. They've been around for a while. You can design your controller. I mean, everything from the buttons to the arrow stick to the uh, triggers on the back, start, and the uh, media share. Um, the What caught my eye, of course, is Fallout. So they have a Fallout-inspired one. Uh, you've got it there. It's got all the little Fallout uh, guys on the back, uh, gold arrow keys. Um, I'm trying to explain kind of a white and blue pattern, like mm-hmm. uh, Fallout vault suits. Yep. It's a beautiful controller. I Yeah. It looks but the so price nice. on these puppies, have you ever designed one? No, they're expensive, aren't they? They're yeah. about 65, 70 bucks. Yeah, easy. And Which, then if honestly... you add different materials, different textures, it adds. But I mean, if you play this a lot, you do. it's probably worth it. Now, I have seen like there's some people that will do custom control they hand paint them you'll spend more than that i've seen oh. some where some controls are like 100 bucks 150 but they're hand painted you know custom oh yeah i think we saw some not this year but last year at comic con scan city and they were amazing yeah they were that they, they're they're pricey though now i don't know if we had the article i thought i had added but i'm not seeing it there was an xbox a special edition xbox well it was a vault remember that you and i were talking about it Maybe yeah, I, I will that. look that up. I thought, oh, actually, I, oh, I got it right here. Oh, perfect. It was you actually in our nerd there? news. And the reason why I put it in the nerd news, because when Doug had um, added this here, the actual uh, controller. The controller customization. Yeah, yep. it, it reminded me around the same time he posted this, there is an official themed Xbox X coming with its own vault. Yes. I mean, look at this thing. I thought it was crazy. So to describe it for those uh, listening, you are looking like an old timey bank vault or one that you may have now with a a gun safe number dials. Yeah. And it's got the gears from the vault 33 and I'm trying to zoom in what it says there on the bottom. Uh, It says Fort Knox. Oh, Fort Knox. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Got better eyes than me. And then your Xbox fits inside this with the good old vault guy giving you a thumbs up. I don't understand. Is there? Is it meant to run inside of the vault? And is there ventilation? I would think it would get too hot. Yeah, I, I know. That's know. like my immediate thing is like, oh my gosh. It doesn't like, I don't, have a lot about it. I don't think I would run it. But what's cool about it is the Xbox itself has that same skin of the little Fallout Boy all over it that we just saw yeah. on. You can get a matching controller and on a matching here. Xbox. Yep. And yeah, they were matching. So you get it basically it's skinned the same way so that they would they would match. So I guess if you have tons of money to spend. You can do that. Yeah, I'm looking up uh, Fort Knox vaults. Uh, they have some nice actual safes, I believe. I bet they do. Been around. They've been around a long time. Uh, so. It's important to note that this collaboration, the reason why you're hearing all this Fallout stuff is because it's in preparation for the Fallout TV show coming out on Amazon Prime on April 11th, which it's interesting because when we were at Comic-Con, I have never seen so much Fallout stuff in my life. Both cosplayers, oh yeah, yes. and so, and, and it's ironic the video that's blowing up of ours that is is the one Doug made on Fallout One. So yeah. it's a hot commodity right now, man. You... I appreciate. It. We gotta, you know, uh, something's hot. We gotta take mm-hmm. advantage of it. Well, yeah, you, you definitely you're riding that bull. <laughs> so, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right, what else we got here? Oh, uh, close that out. Boom. Now, this is a story for your brother, big time. Yeah, he gave us this story, actually. Uh, he oh, sent it to us. Nice. Uh, yeah, so shout out to Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
let's see, Atari is coming back to the arcades. Now, they had a series that they were doing for quite some time called the Recharge uh, series. And really what this is, uh, is the reskinning or the remastering of old classics like Missile Command, um, Centipede, Asteroids, Yars, Gravatar, I mean, Breakout, like they're original originals. Now, they're, you could play them on Switch, you can get them in compilations, but they're now putting them in actual arcade cabinets, Yeah, and they're going to be coming to an arcade near you. So this is a big deal. First time in 25 years that uh, Atari has been involved in the, the cabinet uh, business. Yep. Uh, and looking at all these games, the artwork is amazing. You know, Missile Command, um, just such beautiful artwork. Almost like a comic book. Now, do you have a lot of uh, history with these? Not to call out your age or anything, but I remember uh, Missile Command. I definitely remember Centipede, Asteroids. Now, this uh, Yars and Gravatar, I didn't have any experience with it at all. Yeah, I mean, some of these... <clears throat> so, we had an Atari 70... 70- 800, 7600. Brian's going to yell at me. I'm going to get that wrong. <laughs> but we had an Atari. He's older than me, so let's be fair. So I, I don't remember it as much. I do remember the games that we did have. Obviously, we had some of these, but I remember we had E.T. I remember my favorite was The Empire Strikes Back on oh, the Atari. Yeah. Uh, that was funny. It's hard as all get out. Um, yeah. So, yes. Now, is that the wireframe one? Uh, no, it is not. The, you, the wireframe one was uh, in the arcade cabinet. Uh, oh, okay. It was it was the uh, the Star Wars game for it. Let me just go ahead and get it for you. Yeah, there it is. Actually, it's one of the first ones. Hey, there yeah. it is. Oh, I do remember playing that. Yeah. So I it, never owned an Atari, but I played that. Yeah, and so it, uh, it had the AT walkers, uh, the AT right, walkers, nice. and you had to essentially fight them. And it's very blocky, of course, but I remember playing this a lot. And I remember Pitfall, uh, a lot of Pitfall. But so mm-hmm. I, I have smatterings of memories of games that we would play. Um, I'm sure my brother would remember them more so than me, just because, he, again, he's a little bit older. Um, and I know he's going to like totally, once he sees this, he's going to correct me on the Atari stuff. So because he has a better memory yeah. than me. He was older. He remembers this stuff. But I do remember this game. and It was a lot of fun. Very good. So Atari coming back to the arcades. Um, it'd be fun, I think, to see these and play these again because they're totally new graphics and everything that'll be fun definitely now i i picked this article about these uh what are they called their um paper tablets e-ink e-ink okay thank Mm -hmm. you much so i picked this because i know you have one that you love and you said that feels like writing on real paper i was just going to get your thoughts on this it is a super note nomad tablet yeah, this is mine uh, right they're here. saying, uh, say goodbye to paper forever. Oh, yours looks awesome. Yeah. So this is did a Kindle. Did you draw that? Yes, yeah, I did. No, I didn't. It's a Kindle scribe. <laughs> and so what's cool about, and we've talked about this before, is it is an e-ink, which the advantage to e-ink is that you will have, you know, life in the battery for a long, long time because they're very low battery draw. And then you can see I've got my writings there. Um, so nice. it, this one, it, it doubles as both. You can read your Kindle books on it, but then you can also take notes. Now, the other competitor to this that was really close to getting, but it was still kind of pricey for me, was the Remarkable 2. And it's been out for a while. But this one I hadn't seen before. Yeah. And it some of these run actual Android OS. And I'm not sure if this one is running. If it does, it actually can have more apps. But this has got a pretty good rating, though. I haven't heard of this one. The I Super don't believe Nomad. it does. It does have a 7.5 out of 10 from mm-hmm. uh, Android Police. Mm-hmm. Uh, it talks about excellent writing experience, long battery life, stylish uh, design. Uh, it has a user-replaceable battery, which uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about that later with the EU, who is pushing removable uh, batteries or replaceable batteries in cell phones. Yep. Um, some of the cons, you know, no lighting, but it's an e-ink tablet, so there's not a lot of light. And then you got to buy a stylus separately. So, yeah. And that was a lot of complaints people had about the remarkable no, no backlighting. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about mine. It actually is backlit. So you yeah. can write. Now, in, I had to go down memory lane, not to interrupt you. Yeah, uh, go ahead. November 2007, Amazon released the first uh, Kindle. 
It I sold out it. in five hours for three hundred and ninety nine bucks. I love Kindle, man. I gotta tell you, and that. it remained out of stock for five months until two thousand eight. It says, "Well, you won't. This won't surprise you, but a lot like my video games. You know how I'm, I'm digital. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. books. I'm, I'm digital as well. Now, my daughter, she's hardcore paper all the way, which you know is fine. I don't have anything yeah. against paper, but for me personally, I love these." Kindle like experiences to read because they just don't you can have hundreds and thousands of books on one device. It's oh it's, yeah. It's amazing. My uh father had a Kindle and he had a bunch of westerns and uh kind of uh military books on there and he just scroll and scroll and scroll for hours. He never charged it, he never did anything with it. It was amazing. They are great. These e inks, this is their competitor that's on the screen, the remarkable. Now it's super thin, about the size of an iPad, close to ten inches. Uh, and it does feel like you're writing on paper because they have kind of a texture on them. Uh, there is a new one. I just saw at CES where they're doing color e-ink. And the color e-ink's been out for a while. But there's some of these tablets are starting to come around with color e-ink. Now, it's a muted color palette. Well, actually, there it is right here. Oh, very nice. It, it actually is in this article that you had posted. You can see the well, color. Well, that's nice and subtle, yeah. It's subtle. And I think that's awesome because if you want to read comic pop books. Of color. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're into comic books or graphic novels and you want them in digital form, this is a great alternative. Typically, I do like the color graphic novels, novels on my iPad because yeah. the colors pop. But this would be a good alternative as well. And this box one just came out. So these are it great. looks great. Now, yeah. These are really cool devices. If you love taking notes and you love reading digital books, you can't go wrong with any of these. They're so, they're so cool. Well, I, I love think, uh, you know, I'm out of school, out of uh, college. I think I would have loved to have one of these. Oh, they're great. And what's awesome about- Because think how many uh, notebooks we went through. Oh, dude, tons. And what's also awesome about my Kindle Scribe is that it will read the book to me. It has Bluetooth. So oh, I put nice. my headphones in and, and it doesn't, I mean, you don't have to own Audible. Now, if you have Audible, which is a paid service where you actually have a narrator, like a professional voice actor, it'll do that mm -hmm. too. But if you don't, even if you don't own that, all I'll do is tell it, go ahead and read this to me. And it does it through the Alexa voice. So it's really, really nice if you're into one to do audiobooks as well. It's a great device, man. I, I can't say enough good things about these. Good article, man. Yeah. So you talk about, I'm um, going off a tangent real quick. Uh, not a tangent, but off track. Uh, Wesley Crusher from mm -hmm. uh, Star Trek. You remember him? I do. So he actually narrates, and I know I've talked about it before, Ready Player One, Ready Player Two, and Armada. He does a such a great job at narration. Uh, Will Wheaton is his name, but yep. yeah. Yep. Great job. There's some good stuff. So if you had one of these devices, you could like listen to Will Wheaton read to you. Oh, nice. <laughs> ah, next one up. Kind of excited. I'll I let am. You, let you go. So for it. it is a trailer for Alien Romulus. It uh, doesn't have a release date that I know of yet. It is uh, another entry into the Aliens franchise. Have you watched any of those? Oh, hopefully. God, yes. oh. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, them. take away your nerd card there. Yeah, no, man. I love them. Yeah, this thing looks... And this, it's not it's not directed by Ridley Scott, but it is produced by Ridley Scott. Now, Ridley yep. Scott is the originator of these. And, of course, James Cameron of Terminator mm -hmm. fame and Titanic fame uh, did one of them as well. And uh, But Ridley Scott started this. And Ridley, of course, did Gladiator and 50 billion others he also did the prometheus and alien covenant he may have been a producer on that one but he he's back in this which is good what's cool they're getting back to the scary this has a very oh yes our, so yeah. for those listening we're watching uh dark deep space uh very dark uh corridor spaceship yeah uh, the face huggers running on the ground jumping on people it's uh Terrible. As one of our friends said when we were texting about this, he did point out it has a very alien isolation field. Alien isolation is a video game. Super it's also scary. In, it's Jump also in scares. VR. Yeah, you can watch people. You yeah, go to YouTube and watch people playing alien isolation in VR. It's hilarious because yep. they're they're scared. It has that feel to it. it. Makes me want to go back to play the game. We might need to cover that. We may need to cover that. I know Doug and I were really heavy into playing Alien Fire Team Elite there for a long time. Oh, such good times! We played the crap out of that, so it makes me want to jump in that game and play it because you just get wave after wave, and uh, and some of them have really tight corridors. And then we added a backtrack of music. 
<laughs> yes. Epic time. yes, we do. Nothing like the Doom song coming on when you're lighting up your flamethrower shooting face huggers. Oh, yeah. Good times. <laughs> We're going to talk about that here in a moment when we get into our main topic, though. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Next All up. Right. This yeah, was interesting. Going. Yeah. Spotify. So Spotify is adding a video learning course in its latest experiment. It's offering four course categories in the UK. Uh, you can make music and get creative, learn business, living healthy. This is fascinating. So they're doing a partnership with some learning platforms and yeah. you will be able to basically, whether you want to learn how to do photography, programming, how to play guitar. I think this is smart. So Spotify, obviously known for music. They're known for podcasting. Now they're branching into e-learning. And there's a lot of great platforms out there like Udemy. There's just, I mean, there's just tons of them that yeah. you could use. And if you have it within your Spotify app, and then you can have a playlist for things that you're learning. And Spotify already does video as well as audio. It's really, it's a cool pivot. I got to give them credit. I like it. You know, talking about learning on the internet, I learned to frame my entire basement of my old house on YouTube. Did you really? And I did a really good job. You know, I mean, I studied, 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 and then I had some help in person from some people, but uh, ran all the wire, ran all the insulation, framed the entire basement. It you was too. great. Dude, it's you amazing. Too. The You can learn anything now. My wife and I were watching, there's an Apple show called lessons in chemistry and it's about a brilliant chemist played by brie larson in the 1950s oh, and nice. during this there was a whole thing where her daughter was wanting to find out more information about her father who had passed away she went to the library and had to hand the librarian this information about i'm looking for you know a boy's home by this name and, and a person from these dates to this date, like all this criteria. And the librarian looked at her and said, wow, okay, I'm going to need about a week and then I'll get back with you. The librarian basically was the Google search, had to go through oh. books, go through newspapers, go through periodicals, make phone calls. And then the librarian came back to her with her information. Now think about how long that took back then. And now you can, anything, you can learn anything. Oh, it's I mean, uh, you know, I just talked earlier about searching my own name. Uh, Google loves to put stats. So they did the 2 million results in 0.48 seconds. So not 48 seconds, 48 milliseconds. It had my results. So, so think powerful. how fast you're gaining information here. Why do we still have stupid people? Uh, that's a whole that's not our format that's not our format oh i, I shouldn't drag us in that direction that is true uh, yeah. that is true point is you can learn anything it's it's at yeah. your fingertips my friends so that's really awesome good for spotify i think this is a cool thing i'll try it out i think I'll it is it. too i think it's neat all right gotta end Last with ai one to close it out yeah we haven't talked about ai at all this year have we i'm sure we have yes we have oh, okay yeah okay. i know we have so uh Apple and Google are discussing a deal to bring generative AI to iPhones. Um, other articles I saw said Gemini is going to Apple. But uh, I say that uh, because I'm going to say, I don't know if Apple's going to say, hey, we want your AI, but we want to name it something else. Yeah. Actually, it's it would not be too far different than what Microsoft did with ChatGPT. They essentially said, hey, can we use ChatGPT? Let's enter an agreement. Oh, by the way, it's now called Copilot. It was Bing. Yep. Now we're going to call so it. So some, uh, something different for their format. Yeah. And, I, and it might be smart for Google and Apple to team up because Microsoft and ChatGPT is a pretty big force to be reckoned with. So this is, might be a smart play. It's interesting, though, that we always talk about the Android-Apple debate, and now there's this cohesion, which is yeah. funny because for a while there, Google and Android were partnering up with Microsoft because you could do phone link on Windows, but it was only available for Android, not iOS. Now they've changed that since. But everybody's like, oh. And they made an announcement that when Microsoft changed their Bing browser, which is obviously, it's not called Bing. It is um, the Microsoft Edge. They switched to the Chrome engine. And mm -hmm. one of the things Microsoft said was, well, that's because uh, if we switch to the Chromium engine and our partnership with Google for the browser, you can run Android apps out of Windows. And everybody's like, oh, now that never fully came to fortune. You can do it, but it never caught on. So it just makes you wonder, did the partnership 
you know, change? Is it souring a little bit? It's, yeah. it, I don't know. It's interesting to see Apple and Google cozy enough. Now, not to throw some hate on iPhone, but my interaction with Siri back in the iPhone 4 long time ago, but it was never good, never perfect. It's I always great. saw lots of memes about Siri mispronouncing, Siri not understanding anything at all. What's your experience with it? You're, you're spot on. It's still that way. Siri is not the best of the AIs. And the reason for that, here, my Siri's... She's popping up right now because I, I was oh, talking. <laughs> Sorry, Siri. Uh, I got to be careful saying her name. She's listening. But it's not that great compared to okay. Alexa. And it is simply boils down to what we said earlier in the broadcast is that Apple is huge on privacy. That is a true statement. And so they do not train their data sets like, well, Alexa. Alexa is always listening. You know, Amazon's a little more freewheeling with that data. Uh, so Alexa has been trained on a larger data set and Alexa is so much better at answering questions than, than yeah. she is. Uh, we can have, uh, I know we have an Alexa, it's in the other room and shouldn't hear me, but we have open-ended conversations. Just yeah. keep asking questions all done. Yeah. It, uh, Apple is behind. They're behind. Now I respect that they're, you know, they're, they're very, very pro privacy, but AI is only as good as what you allow it to train on, and you need large data sets to train it and for it to be good. I I have been playing a lot more with ChatGPT, and I've been telling Doug about it, and there was this video I saw, and I tested it myself, and it's so, so creepy. Maybe we can do a live demo of it at some point here, yeah, but ChatGPT can talk like Siri and Alexa now, and mm -hmm. you tell it, you say, hey, I want you to explain a living room put some ums in there and breathe and make it sound as lifelike as possible. I, yeah. Watch that video. It's crazy. Like mind blown, like mind blown. It sounded like a full blown human. It was so yeah. creepy. This is how Skynet started. That's all I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think it's just like every week I send Doug something about AI, like what's going on. I'm just like, dude, this is so cool. Yeah. And it's so scary. I've never seen anything develop. That's so cool. And so scary all at the same time. And I'm well, in technology, look, man. It's like you look uh, back a year on this show. Oh alone, God, it wasn't even on our covered last year. Oh my gosh, compared to this year, AI was well, it blew up amazing. last year around this time. It was March. Yeah, is really when ChatGPT took off, and it was just kind of murmurings at this point. So it's so exciting. It's really cool to see it develop and get better and better and better. It's gonna be. I I will dare say to your point, a year from now. If we go back from season three or season four to season one, I bet it's going to be dramatically different. Oh, yeah. Definitely. What we're seeing. It's advancing so quickly. We may have to have an AI roundup at the end of the year if we can remember that. Yeah, we'll try to put it on the list. <laughs> we'll, we'll add I'll, it to the I'll list. I'll try to type that somewhere. Yeah. It's recorded. We can go back and. You know. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> All right. That does it for the news. We had quite a bit there. So let's go yeah. ahead. I'm going to stop. We've got to cover two weeks worth of uh, information. And, and, you know, we probably could have kept going. There's just yeah. so much going on, on, you know, with everything. So for our main topic, not that we've had tons of time, but what time that we have had, it, it's, it's really been taken up with a, a particular game that we've talked about before called Helldivers. Now, I never played the first one, and I believe the first Helldivers wasn't even first person. This is a sleeper hit game. Let me yeah. briefly explain it. Four people co-op. You either have friends that you know play or you just play with strangers. It's really hard. It's like Starship Troopers, and you're trying to liberate the universe, and you keep flying down to this planet. You're going to die a lot. It's really hard. And you can call in all of these different orbital strikes from your fleet carriers that are up above. And it's a massive war. And you can fight bugs on some planets, like Starship Troopers, and then you can fight robots on another, which is like, terminators is that a good summation no i think you're exactly right yeah and so i've got some footage gameplay footage here if you haven't seen it and what we want to talk about today is just our time with the game what are our impressions and we just really kind of want to go through like what is so different about this game and why it's been taken by storm and why it's a sleeper hit so yeah, I think the uh, first thing that really caught my attention is you are a squad of four. You've got these stratagems, which is essentially calling in for assistance, whether it's weapons or airstrikes or 
uh, a little robot that helps protect you. Um, just a totally different style of gameplay than I'm used to. Uh, it's not like Call of Duty or I'm trying to think of anything similar like to it. Battle- I don't know, Battlefield. It's, it's kind it's of so its different. own thing. Yeah. It really is because you're not fighting other players for enemies. You are fighting AI, the, yeah. but there's hordes and hordes of them. So it's a, it's truly a co-op game. Now, what really makes it different is Friendly Fire is turned on, and that makes oh. it so difficult. You are going to die a lot. Sorry, there's an ad that popped up here. <laughs> it's going to be that way. I'm on YouTube. Ah, uh, YouTube. I know. So you while your ad's loaded, oh, we're back. There but you, uh, you talk about Friendly Fire. We have a friend. We'll go ahead and say his name is Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shout out to Aaron. He puts his stratagems or his airstrikes a little close. He <laughs> may forget to give us a warning. And, oh, by the way, I have an airstrike coming. You should call him Captain Napalm. <laughs> Oh, uh, he's, I'm sure he has uh, winning at heart and not. Oh, no, he does. He just, he loves carpet bombing his friends. It's okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) We have to give him a little heck. But you know, that's the beauty of the game though, because you do have to, you can't, you can't just go in blazing. You really have to strategize, work together and you have to look out for one another. It's definitely causes you to change the way that you play. Because you're not only now looking out for each other, so I don't shoot my friend, but you're Mm -hmm. also trying to, you know, get the bugs. And you can see on the footage here, it's mayhem. Stuff you're shooting at you left and right. But the game's a blast. Now, it's kind of grindy, which some games could be. Because the idea is, as you do these missions, and there's different mission types. There's some where you have to activate a tower. Some you have to launch a nuclear missile. Some you just got to survive the waves. You get different types of currency in-game. And you can mm-hmm. upgrade your gear, get new stratagems, new things you can call down from your carriers. And it's kind of fun to be able to get those new things. And what we find that we have to do as a team is before we go down, we're like, well, what's the mission type? And then, you know, Doug, you bring your sentry guns. I'm going to yep. bring, you know, this particular weapon, like this big rocket launcher, because we know there's these great big giant bugs called chargers. And you have to work together on what you're bringing down with you. So there's a strategy element on even trying to decide what you bring down. And there's only a certain amount of slots that you can fill up. So, and there's tons of different variety in the game. So you, between the four of you, you really got to talk through who's bringing what. Yep. And that's what uh, drew me to it. It's uh, lots and lots of teamwork. You talk about the other games, Call of Duty, Battlefield, anything else. Uh, you get in a random match with someone you don't know. The team play is going to be, this guy may just be on his own. Or you may get a, a teammate that uh, really helps you out and uh, like watches your back and stuff. It's I like bag. this, that you have to watch your back because it's really a team effort. You can't do this on your own because those bugs are tough. And it's the game is best played. So there's been a lot of critique about people who have a very mixed bag of experience of whether you're playing public or not. We've had the most fun playing with our group of friends because we know them and we trust them as much as we tease Aaron. Uh, it's yeah. really nice because you he, become... He is a good player. <laughs> he is a good player. He's one of our best ones. And But he was playing this game by himself. And then when our other friend Joe reached out to him, he's like, oh, I've already bought it. I've been playing it. And he's like, kind of, it's kind of a grind. It's hard. And it's tough when you don't have a core group. Now you get a core group. I, I think the enjoyment of the game dramatically went up compared to playing public now they have had the evolution of the game it's a very small developer i don't think that they planned on the game being as popular as it has been they had some server issues with it being overcrowded i think we talked on the podcast at one point they had half a million or six hundred thousand players all at once just from steam just from steam that didn't include this has got cross play doug will play on pc i'll play on xbox and so i'm that guy you know that guy he's that the green text guy. Everybody else is on PlayStation. I'm on PC. So <laughs> forces us to use the in game chat. It's so annoying. Oh yeah. <laughs> but either way, it's it's really it's they've overcome a lot of the performance issues. It's gotten better. But the game has evolved since we first started playing. And they will weaken some weapons, strengthen others, and then recently they added mech suits. Now, what's your thought on the mech? Because people are excited about it. Uh, yeah, people were very excited about it. They were worried that it was going to be OP, which is overpowered for those that don't know. Um, uh, my enter, my take on it is it 
sucks, you know? It's um, not as one rocket strong, from yeah. the robot enemy and you're dead. And then a couple swipes from the bug enemy, the terminoids. I should be using uh, proper terms and you're dead. I just didn't think it was as tough as it should be. Yeah. It seems like it doesn't last very long. It, it gets kind of chewed up pretty easily. And yeah. so, yeah, I was a little disappointed in it as well. I would personally, I don't think they'll ever do. I would love vehicles in the game because you have to run so far sometimes. And who knows? It would be so much fun to be able to run, oh, yeah. run over bugs. That would be so much fun. I don't think the vehicles will ever add those. Now, there is rumors that we already have robots and we have bugs. There's rumors they're going to add an alien race. So there'll be a third enemy. Yeah, to go against. I'm glad you brought that up. So I've been watching a lot of videos. They said that the alien race is already assisting us. Um, with some blue strikes from out of a world to take down some enemies. I was uh, going to ask if you saw any blue lasers or blue uh, strikes I actually, coming. I actually in. have. I actually oh, have. Man. I thought it was okay. a weapon in the game. It's like almost like a sniper. I, I think everything I'm reading, it says it's aliens trying to help us out. But really? I believe they may become our enemies soon. Yeah, that's what I... Because I think they were in the first game. Again, I didn't play the first game. And I don't think the first game is... It's not structured like this. I think it's more third person yeah i don't think anybody really knew about the first game if they did i, I don't i don't it's definitely not it didn't have the game. following that it has now exactly i thought it was more yeah. of a map game kind of starcrafty but i could be wrong yeah. on that i never played it this one is just it just came out of nowhere but we were having a lot of fun with it we are i like that the developer is adding new things keeping people interested in it adding new mission types unlocking mm-hmm. parts of the map and they say it's one guy that's like a game master at this company that's controlling they have every week they have community goals it kind of reminds me of like old mmos so having fun with it like i've been playing it a lot longer than i thought i would because oftentimes i get on these kicks i'll play this for a long time and then i get kind of tired of it but this one this one's good we've been having a lot of fun with it and that's why we wanted to call it out because it's kind of grabbed our attention and it's really brought us together and really got me back into playing with friends again, which I went yeah. through such a long hiatus. Now, when you guys aren't available on this, I've been going back to Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> it's yeah. a, way more chill, honestly. I haven't checked that out yet. That's a I was going to do you time. own Baldur's Gate 3? I do not. Well, if you do, you know there's multiplayer in it. That may be another one we get into. Uh, yeah, it, we need to. That's a good way to do some D&D. We, we try that stint, you know, maybe that's another way to do it. Yeah. Talking about the Helldivers 2, I looked up the current statistics. Um, right now, there is 221,000 people playing on Steam alone. In this moment. Uh, the last, uh, yep, 24-hour peak was 238,000. And the last peak for the last month, 458,000 players just on Steam alone. So that doesn't count. So it's holding strong, 221,000 right now. That's crazy. And it's a, we're recording this on a... On a work week and night it's not even a week oh yeah so, hopefully they got all their homework and stuff done so i hope so i hope so i personally i'm really glad i've done i've done a few of the public missions i don't know if you have or not it's not as enjoyable you're right because it's just such a mixed bag you're either going to get somebody who's really good or not now the developer yeah. has a problem in the public space i guess there's something called meta loadouts and what that means is it's preferred equipment like it's a a backpack with a personal shield and certain gun types and what's going on in the community is if you go join a public game if you don't select that exact uh loadout they're they're booting you from the game they're kicking you out of their game and the developers trying to stop that from happening and so they're struggling yep i definitely noticed that uh there's some really high players, maybe suspiciously high, unless they're just playing all the time. Probably. That uh, if you're low, I mean, I'm like a level 19, 20. The guy is playing with is a level 50. Oh, uh, wow. They'll drop you some weapons. So uh, it's not a negative thing I was saying, but yeah. he said, hey, check out this weapon I got at level 50. And it was amazing. That's cool that he did that. That's kind of nice. See, so I, those are the players that make the game fun. They do. I didn't have as good a experience no i've had bad experiences where i just can't get a game can't get a game join and then you've been kicked from the party yeah that happens right away which to me i'm like you know if you're gonna do that just stick with your private party like we do you know we just closed off ours now there is a cool feature we haven't used it but let's say there's two or three of you and you're in a jam isn't it an sos you can call down yeah and it brings someone uh, right to you or 
I don't know how it works though. I've I'm, never used it. I'm pretty sure what it does is it sends an SOS and it probably pings something on the map and it may help with matchmaking. So if you have one person that's a one-off, they can quickly join your game. It's kind of like Very an nice. open lobby. And then they also give you help. Typically you're going to be throwing out that SOS when you're in a jam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to need somebody to fall down. So I know we've had some tough games where we had to scale back the difficulty a little bit. It seems like the robots are way They're tougher than the bugs are. Yeah, I completely agree. It, it, that's why I don't know They're, if they add another enemy, what that's going to be like. But I will say this game has some of the most capturable moments. There, if you go out on YouTube, you can look at shorts, but just type in incredible Helldiver 2 moments. And the things that happen in this game because of how many enemies there's been situations where you have to, after you complete your mission, you got to get on a, a plane and you only have so many seconds mm -hmm. before it yep. takes off and you're getting rushed and somebody, or it lands on somebody and crushes them on accident. Cause some of That's the glitches, happened to me a lot. Uh, some of the glitches are hilarious, uh, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, it's a really, really good game and it's captured our attention a lot longer. And so we wanted to showcase it and just uh, let everybody know that it's definitely worth checking out if you have some free time. So that's how we, we try to chill. We don't get to play very often, uh, but when we do, it's provided a lot of fun for us. Yeah. To kind of wrap us up here, I use, and I have used a stream deck and uh, for those watching on video, I'll kind of show, uh, I have uh, programmed my stratagems to this stream deck I had to do a couple workarounds because uh, it went too fast and it didn't recognize the combinations. So I was able to add a little pause in there. I found it on Reddit or YouTube of how to program it. But it is amazing. You just hit one button and you see your guy doing the strategy. It works great. And, and to explain real quick why that's a big deal is because to call down a strategy, whether you're on pc or console you have to do a combination of button pushes like up up left right down down and then it, it, it'll fall what he's yeah, saying is to it's, me it's almost like a fatality code in mortal Kombat. it is like that and by having a macro tied to his stream deck when you hit that button it does that combination for him so he can single button push and call things down versus mm -hmm. having to you know do it on his keyboard or a controller yeah, it works great. Now, the really long ones, um, I think like Orbital Strike is the really long ones. one. Yeah. They don't work a lot, but the short ones like Revive and mm -hmm. Getting the Machine Gun and a Simple Strike, those work great. Well, and it caused a lot of controversy. People were saying, well, that's cheating, you know, but I don't know. You need this game, even with that as an advantage, this game's so hard and challenging that you need all the help you can get. It's Oh, yeah. You definitely die a lot. <laughs> so yeah. much. So, but well, I think they game. should embrace it a little bit. I think so. They too. should do a partnership with Steam. I think Stream they should. Deck. I keep saying Steam. Yeah, Steam. Stream Deck. Well, it, I do the same thing. They're, they're very similar. Steam Deck, there. Stream Deck. There you, know. you go. Yeah. It's all, I get it. But no, it's a great game. It's, it's fun to showcase. So, yeah. But yeah, that'll do it for our main topic. And before we close this bad boy out, um, I want to point out our uh, retro reviews. So. If you haven't got a chance, we created a new playlist is why I wanted to point this out. So if you go to our mainline channel, uh, obviously you have our podcast, but if you go under playlist, I went ahead and created out here a dedicated retro reviews. So if you click on that, it's going to cycle through all of them. And so far we're up to four uh, grand total of them. You can see them here and we've got more on the way. So I know we plugged in at the beginning of the episode, but since I was already on YouTube, I thought, you know what? Hey, why not? Why don't, why don't we... Just plug your own little stuff, you know. Very nice. So it's fun. And don't forget, we also have our our store with all kinds of new things out there with a reduced uh, price tag on things. So if you're looking for something, uh, we've also got some very interesting uh, guests that we're lining up. I believe our guest, uh, the next episode. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. The very I next episode. next Friday. Yeah, yeah. So we will. Or Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whenever. We're yeah, going, yeah. So this coming weekend, we're going to take a break. But the first weekend, yes, it'll be that weekend of April 5th, 6th. Uh, we'll get it posted around there. But so we're going to have a really cool guest at that time. And it'll be fun. And then we're coming close to the RetroCon for what we work with the retro video game. And it's already sold out with vendors. And so it seems like it's going to be a pretty big year for that. 
So between guests and new events, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and I noticed uh, we're going to cover it all, but the RetroCon, they've got some bigger names on YouTube, at least. Uh, they've got the artists from Mortal Kombat coming back. They've got uh, three or four retro collectors that I'd really like to meet and talk to. That'll yep. be great. We'll try, to, we'll try to snag them. So, everyone, we want to thank you so much for joining us each week after week. That wraps up episode number 10, and we really do appreciate you. Uh, we're going to take a week break, and then we'll be back that first weekend in April uh, with episode number 11. See, I'm going to get these numbers down. Probably by the yeah. time I get the numbers, we're going to be in season three, and I'll have to start all over again. Well, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody, you have a great week, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. See ya.